Black Ensemble Theater in 1976. The mission of the Black Ensemble Theater is to eradicate racism and its devastating effects on society through theater arts and community engagement. Have we been successful? It'll take another 200 years to eradicate racism. But you have to start somewhere. Black Ensemble Theater is like a seed. A seed that grows into a huge tree. And that tree will live on for many, many centuries. How do we eradicate racism with the Black Ensemble Theater? Well, we do that in many ways. We do that through our productions. We do that through our educational outreach programs. We do that by bringing the community together to talk, to help understand the humanness of who we are as a people, and to take those conversations and create, create bridges, bridges that bring people together because we have so much more in common as human beings than we do as individual people. 48 years now, Black Ensemble Theater has survived. I started it with a $5,000 loan. And the reason that I started it was I'm an actress. And I had the opportunity to make a major motion picture in 1976 called Cooley High. And that propelled me into the film industry. And if you've seen Cooley High, you know that the message is anti-violence. It was important that we show black people being real people and making connections with each other. We're not all about violence as some of our communities would like for you to believe. There's a lot of love, a lot of family, a lot of strength in the community. I'm also an educator. I had taught thousands of kids. Being from Cabrini Green, I taught self-love. I taught the greatness of who we are as black people. We have served over 100,000 young people in our educational outreach programs. Our programs are the same as they were 48 years ago. We are here to let young people know that they are somebody. Reverend Jackson said it as a chant, and it reverberated throughout the community. It needs to come back. We also use music. Our music is very important to us. And I wanted to use music because music already has crossed cultural barriers. But music is so important. It's important because it it has, it has created bridges that bring people together. Muddy Waters, the Hoochie Coochie Man, uh, Teddy Pendergrass, Marvin Gaye, the story of Jackie Wilson, A Taste of Soul. And we produce those kind of plays because it's important to understand our history. It's important for black people to understand our history because our history has been kept away from us for many, for centuries. So the history of who we are as a people and how we got to where we are is so vitally important. And we incorporate that history in all of our productions. You know, I spent 10 years trying to figure out what plays to produce that would attract 
a diverse audience. And uh, when we first started, we produced classic plays like A Streetcar Named Desire, Medea, Julius Caesar. Oh, we were, but we were doing great theater, but we weren't attracting a diverse audience. And in order to facilitate our mission, we had to attract a diverse audience. So in one way we were being very successful, but in another way toward our mission, we were not. I happened to go to a blues club one night, and in that blues club I saw a highly diverse audience. People of all colors and kinds, some could speak English and some couldn't. And I was like, okay, this, this is interesting, maybe if I produced a blues play, maybe that might bring in a diverse audience. Because we weren't producing musicals, but I said, maybe, maybe this is the key. And uh, we wrote and produced a play called Muddy Waters, The Hoochie Coochie Man. And overnight, I had a diverse audience. I had people, all colors, all kinds, coming to the theater. Some could, couldn't even speak English. So I said, this is it. This is the formula. Music is the key. And that's why we produce so many musicals. Because that formula has grown. And now our audiences come to expect that they're going to get great music, a good show, and they figure out that they've learned something once they get home. Because we, the way that we write our material is with a little sugar so that messages don't hit you until you start thinking about what it is that you've seen and what you heard and then you go oh wow that's amazing 55,000 people a year so we we got to be doing something right for 48 years you know sustainability is so important it's so important and i, I realized early on that Black Ensemble Theater, because of its vital mission, had to sustain, and it had to sustain beyond a person. Uh, because people can come and go, and uh, we're fragile. I wanted to ensure that Black Ensemble survived beyond its founder. So we decided to build our own facility the Black Ensemble Theater Cultural Center. And we raised $20 million to build the Black Ensemble Theater Cultural Center. We have been in our own building, our own home for 12 years. But when we moved in, the plan was to build a village surrounding the theater that would sustain the theater and bring in earned revenues outside of our ticket sales and fundraising, because those are very fragile <laughs> revenue streams. We needed something that would, no matter what happened, would ensure that the theater could continue its very important work. So after we have been in our space for, oh, maybe about six years, we decided, okay, we're going to start visualizing our dream. We named that visualization Free to Be. And it's a community. A community where small businesses can flourish. In the community, we're going to have a performing arts education center that will teach theater, music, dance, we're gonna have a film technology center. 
It would be for students, it would be for professionals, it would be for uh, educators, it would be for schools, so that we ensure that Black Ensemble Theater is, is up on the latest, whatever it could possibly be.